Well, in 1969, Jack Hayford became pastor of a little four-square church in Van Nuys, California. At the time, it was a struggling congregation of just 18 members. But since then, that church has become known as the Church on the Way, one of the largest churches in Southern California. Take a look. Jack Hayford has been in ministry for more than 50 years. He's best known for founding the Church on the Way in Van Nuys, California, where he served as senior pastor for more than three decades. In 1997, Jack founded the King's University, formerly the King's College and Seminary in Los Angeles, where he still serves as chancellor. As an internationally known biblical scholar and teacher, he's ministered in more than 50 nations. He has served as the fourth president of the Foursquare Church denomination and initiated the Day of Prayer for the Peace of Jerusalem. Jack has also penned nearly 600 hymns and courses, including the widely known Majesty. As an author, Jack has written over 50 books. His latest release, Penetrating the Darkness, is his first book on spiritual warfare. That's right. Well, please welcome back to the 700 Club a dear friend, Jack Hayford. Pastor Jack, God bless you. Thank you, Pat. You have written a book along with your daughter called Penetrating the Darkness. That's a, that's a strange title. What is the darkness you're talking about? <laughs> well, you knew, I'm sure. <laughs> We're dealing in a world that is increasingly darkening. It's yeah. just as uh, Israel, when they came out of Egypt, it was gross darkness. And the Bible says gross darkness will cover the earth in yeah. these last times. And there are uh, the nature of the darkness is so apparently. In fact, you just take the events of these last two or three weeks. Uh -huh. The spirit of anarchy is increasing in the, across the earth. There's, uh, and then the things that penetrate people's lives. Uh -huh. uh, that, uh, and that counterpenetration comes from the power of the cross uh -huh. invoked through the ministry of prayer. And that's the penetrating the darkness is seeing the cross as a sword, yeah. a flaming sword too. But uh, as you are very aware, and one of my friends that I most value uh -huh. because you've always gotten this as, has been, this has been one of our real plug-in points through the years. The kingdom uh, is invoked at Jesus' direction in prayer. Uh -huh. In fact, the most commonly prayed prayer in the world, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Yeah. Most people don't even know what they're saying. They yes. really don't, and yeah. I don't say that uh, arrogantly. But invoking the power of the cross uh -huh. against unseen evil is the purpose I wanted to get. That the battle has been decided, but it, uh, yeah. the decision has to be introduced. I was reading today the last chapter of Matthew's gospel, and Jesus met with his disciples, and he said, all exousia, all authority yeah. in heaven and earth has been given unto me. All of it in heaven and earth, and then go you do your thing and preach the, teach all nations. But it's 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 his. He's got all authority over everything. And, and then, having said all authority over all the earth, he said, "Now go into all the earth." Yeah. Which the essence of the concept clearly is that it's where we go, whether it's in prayer or in traveling or in prayer walks that mm -hmm. people go on in. The, in the workplace, being the presence of Jesus there and praying and invoking the presence of the life of the Lord in our prayer life. When, when people are praying, there are many of them that have kind of a dry spell and they don't quite feel they're getting anywhere. They're, the heavens, they say, is brass. What do you tell people like that? You know, uh, we all have those times. I think the thing people most need to know is that you and I have walked in the in the way with the Lord for a lot of years. Right. And people will observe someone like uh, you or me and they'll say, well, why does it always work for them? But we go through those dry spells. Absolutely. And Absolutely. The, the thing is that a dry spell is just a part of the journey and it doesn't mean you are ineffective. Hmm. It means, in fact, to my view, that there's the, the water in the dam is still there. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's going to gonna break out and break yeah. through. So, uh, uh, which is really the the message of this book, uh, the to to lay hold of the mm -hmm. promise, which is the, the, the and the backup of the promise is the cross, yes. and uh, that all authority uh, 
whatever you may at any given point yeah. bind on earth already has been bound in yeah. heaven. Yeah. And sometimes the time lapse between when we apply that, I, I think really, and I talk about this in the book, uh, one of the most commonly used words are, are talking about prayer is supplication. Mm -hmm. And uh, supplication really is that persistent continuance, mm -hmm. as I understand the word, to uh, in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. Let the peace of God mm -hmm. rule in your heart because the cross has triumphed. But it's saying let the peace rule because mm -hmm. there's a time you don't yet see the peace. Hmm. And so continue holding forth in supplications. And it isn't because it we're begging. It's uh -huh. because you are actually like plowing through something yeah. in the invisible realm. And uh, I feel that the last thing I need to do is explain this to you. But Please. we're being interviewed. Please explain. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, you. And that's one of the joys of your friendship through the years is that uh, we partner in, in in a grace of God that has helped right. us at least at that point of understanding. Well, you've had some remarkable things in your own life. I think as a child, were you given up to dead or, or given up to cri being a crippled or yeah. oh, what was it? Well, both. Both. Uh, when I was uh, about six months old, there was a question over my life, medical technology of the time. Uh, <laughs> don't make it sound too far back, yeah. but we are talking the middle 1930s. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, a condition in my neck, I was a breech-born child, mm -hmm. and a condition, a muscular condition, was increasingly uh, coming to a point of risk of what damage it would do to my mm -hmm. body, including uh, something of strangulation and abnormality for life. Right. If uh, the strangulation took place, it would take my life. And uh, uh, it was a gradual thing, but it was relentless, and they didn't have any procedure. I don't even know what to call it, because it probably didn't have a, t a name then. But uh, at any rate, the, the, that was a deliverance, which is a beautiful story uh, that is uh, too long to tell, except to say that my parents didn't know the Lord yet, and oh, a relative did. who didn't know the Lord called a church they heard of yes. that they knew prayed for the sick. The baby got well. About two months later, my parents, my dad worked with a guy who got him and my mom to go yeah. to church. They ended up receiving the Lord in the church that had prayed for this baby Unbelievable. that they didn't even know was, uh, my folks didn't know that when they went to that church so that, and found it out. That's one of those theological, does God answer the prayer of sinners? But he answered the prayer of that church on behalf of sinners. That's great. Yeah, and there was... Uh, uh, and then I, I had, I was about just around three years old, just a little less. I remember being prayed for by the elders of the church uh -huh. from polio, but polio had uh, begun to beset me. And that's another very wonderful story. But I, I can just remember uh, elders laying their hands on me. Mm. And it's a it's a one of those vague earliest memories of my life. God, it, it's like a brand plucked from the burning. God had something yeah. special for you, and I mean, well, you should have. I mean, the devil tried to kill you. He's a very very precious uh, uh, part of my personal biography sure. of the purpose of the Lord and His grace. Well, Jack, this book, Penetrating the Darkness, is something that every Christian ought to read. Where where do they get it? Is it available? Well, it's a, it'll be on the bookshelves uh, almost as we speak in, okay. in the Christian stores. Chosen Books published it, so through Chosen or mm -hmm. My Name, they can go on the web and they could place orders right. if they can't get it in their book room. Penetrating the Darkness, the victory that God wants for every one of us, a man who knows prayer and a dear friend, King's College, and Church on the Way. You're not pastor of Church on the Way. You're sort of emeritus on that now? Yeah, well, uh, they, they just, yes, I am, and they've never used that word. I think uh, it was a kind way of not saying you're not that old yet. Okay. Uh, realistically, that's what they would call it. They're very, very gracious. I yeah. speak at the church still about four times a year yeah. and often well, uh, you're, enjoyed. You're greatly loved and uh, wonderful hymns that... Uh, uh, Famous hymns that Jack has written to you. You love him. But anyhow, uh, we're so glad he's here with us. And this book available, uh, look up Jack Hayford, Penetrating the Darkness. And if you'd like to more about leaders like Jack Hayford, you can uh, uh, log on to the homepage of CBN.com, clip on Leadership Channel link, 
and you'll find a variety of tools, including profiles of men like Jack Hayward. My dear brother, God Thank bless you. Our love to your dear wife, Anna. I'll do that in unity. Thank you. Terry?